everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Huck. Today we are doing my end of year unhaul. So every year at the end of the year, uh, as part of my like end of year wrap up videos, I do a unhaul from my previous year's reading. So anything that I had DNF'd or even if I completed it but decided I'm not hanging on to it, anything I'm unhauling from the previous year's reading, that's what we're talking about. Uh, this year I actually am not doing a worst books of the year video because I didn't really feel like I had enough books that I disliked or books that I had like strong enough feelings to really make a worst books of the year. For a while I considered doing a most forgettable books of the year but decided that video would probably be really boring because it would just be a lot of me being like I forgot I read this. I don't remember much about it, so it's on the list. Uh, so we're not doing those. So the closest thing we're getting to a worst books of the year is the end of year unhaul because these are the books that I DNF'd or read and didn't like enough to hang on to, at least of the books that I owned physically. There are ones that I uh, didn't own physically if I got an ebook or audiobook, but we're not including those. You understand how an on-haul works. Let's just get into it. This is a long preamble. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with the books that were DNFs because those are kind of obvious uh, as to that these are ones that are heading out. And then we'll get into some of the ones that were uh, books that I finished and didn't hate but also don't really want to hang on to. So overall I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books. Uh, so in comparison to some previous years, not that many. I have had some uh, unhaul videos that were huge in previous years, uh, but this year was a pretty good reading year, so there wasn't a lot that I felt like feel the need to unhaul. Anyways, we're getting into it. So first up, we have, also these aren't in any particular order, we're just doing uh, the groups of these are ones I DNF'd and then we'll get into the ones that I finished. Uh, so first up we have Matrix by Lauren Groff. This is historical fiction. Um, what I went into it knowing was people saying it's historical fiction about lesbian nuns, uh, which it is, but for a book that was pitched that way it doesn't actually, it didn't really have a whole lot about the relationships between the nuns. It felt very distance from the characters, it felt very, uh, the storytelling of it felt very like then this happened, then this happened, then this happened, instead of feeling more connected and fluid in the story. Uh, and as I said, I just didn't feel like it focused very much on the actual relationships between the women in this story. Granted, I DNF'd it and I think I got about 40% of the way into the book. Um, so like maybe things would have changed further on, but from what I read I just could not stay focused on the book because I just felt so disengaged from it. Okay, next up we have The Heron King by Eric Lewis. Uh, this is one that I don't remember a whole lot about, but it is a fantasy. I think I didn't really get on with the writing style and also didn't really like any of the characters. I didn't think they were very likable or interesting. I don't always have to like a character if I think they're interesting, but I didn't find that to be the case for like either of those <laughs> scenarios. Uh, to be the case for this one. So I just let this one go pretty early on. Then I have Hunted by Megan Spooner. As this book is a HarperCollins imprint, I just wanted to mention here that the HarperCollins union strike is still going on and there will be links in the description to their social media accounts and different ways to support the strike, so please do check those out. I really wanted to read this because I had liked um, Sherwood, the Robin Hood retelling from Megan Spooner. This, I think, is, I don't know if this is her first book, but this one came out before Sherwood. Uh, but this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and this year, or this previous year, I had some real uh, problems with Beauty and the Beast retellings. I just, I tried to read so many of them and did not like so many of them. Uh, so I don't know what was up with me and Beauty and the Beast retellings in 2022, but they just were not working out for me. After that, 
I have The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. Uh, this is sort of a Romeo and Juliet-esque story because it has uh, a boy and a girl from these like two families that have a long going feud between the two of them which is mostly based on a misunderstanding as far as I could tell uh and that just I just found that really frustrating that so much of it is based on misunderstanding I'm not really much of a one for beauty or uh, not beauty and the Beast, uh Romeo and Juliet esque stories whether it's a really a retelling or not but that kind of setup to a story doesn't really appeal to me that much I just have read other things from this author and really liked them so I wanted to give this one a try and I think that the fact that this type of story doesn't work for me overrode the fact that I tend to like this author this is also one of their earliest books this may be their debut I'm not really sure but um I think that their writing and character work isn't quite as strong in this one as in later books which makes sense it's a debut so that's totally understandable but it's the type of debut where i can see glimmers of who this author would become and the things that i love about their writing and storytelling in later books but it was just like those glimmers and it wasn't enough to really keep me engaged with the story. Next up is The Circle by Sarah B. Elfgren and Matt Strandberg. This is YA paranormal fantasy, I guess. Um, it's following six girls who all get like paranormal powers. I initially picked this up because I had seen somebody say like, it's kind of like the Raven Cycle, but if all the characters were girls, which sounds amazing and also I was trying to collect books for a video that I made that was recommendations for fans of the Raven Cycle so if you like the Raven Cycle you would also like these books I'll link that in the description if you're interested in that video uh but so I read this to see if I should include it in that video obviously I didn't because I ended up DNFing this book but like there are a few reasons that I DNFed them one of the major reasons for me was uh, the characterization in this. There are six point of view characters that we're following and I honestly for the life of me couldn't tell them apart. Uh, which is like just frustrating <laughs> and makes it really difficult to read a book. Anytime it switched perspectives, most of the time I couldn't tell and I would have to just wait for context clues like oh this is the one that has a boyfriend in order to help me figure out who we were talking about. I didn't like the pacing of this, like I read a good chunk of it and it felt like nothing happened. Uh, so it was just really hard to get into. I think it also had, it included a lot of difficult uh, topics that I don't necessarily think were all handled super well. So if you are interested in reading this, definitely look up content warnings for it uh, because they are included and I don't necessarily think all of them are handled particularly well in the book. So lots of reasons to DNF. Okay, then the last one that I have in this category is the Riddle Master series by Patricia McKillop. I have a whole vlog that I will link in the description where I essentially did, do I like Patricia McKillop? Uh, and I read three books from her. This one, spoiler for that vlog, I DNF'd the first book in this series. There are a lot of reasons why. I think some of the main ones being, I did not like the way in which she just dropped you into the story. Uh, I have read books in which authors drop you into the world, into the story with little to no explanation and I have enjoyed those and I feel like there is very much a way to do that skillfully and I have read books that have done it skillfully and I have enjoyed. I don't think that this one does it skillfully. It really gives you no information or context so it is so hard to understand who anyone is or what is going on and in turn so hard to care about anything. I think there were also elements of the characters that I found really frustrating or ways that they acted that I was like why would you do that? Uh, and ways that she kind of introduced plot lines that seemed like they that pretty much went nowhere. Um, so I was like why would you even introduce this 
if you weren't going to do anything with it. Uh, anyway, I have much more of a rant about it in that vlog. So if you want to hear that and more of my like fresh ranting thoughts about it, I will I will link the description in the description. Uh, but this may be the book that I was like most frustrated with of the year. <laughs> Okay, so those were all of the books that I DNF'd throughout the year um, that I physically owned, so I'm unhauling now. And now we can go on to the books that I did finish reading and I am not going to be hanging on to them. I'm going to unhaul them. Maybe someone else will like them. Um, okay, so first up we have Places No One Knows by Brenna Yovanoff. So this is YA contemporary with a little bit of a magical twist to it, I guess. Uh, it is following two main characters, a boy and a girl who go to high school together, and one of them starts appearing in the other one's dreams. Uh, and so they end up kind of creating this relationship and bond uh, as they encounter each other in their dreams and become closer. Uh, and this one was fine. I didn't have a lot of feelings on it. I wanted to try a Brenna Yovanoff book. Um, and now I have. I don't know. I the, These books that I did complete and yet I am unhauling are the ones that I have least opinion about because I didn't hate them enough to unhaul them or to DNF them, uh, but I don't like them enough to keep them, so they're pretty forgettable to me. I probably would read another Brenna Yovanoff book if I thought one of them sounded interesting. Um, I do remember feeling like there were elements of this that these two characters run in different social circles within their school and so they never interact like in real life. They only interact in dreams. Uh, and I think it's meant to feel like bridging that gap in real life is so impossible and that the only way for them to have this connection is through this kind of dream magic that's happening. And yet I really didn't get that feeling. I do feel like maybe it didn't do the best job of communicating what made that barrier feel so insurmountable to the characters because as the reader I was like why can't you just talk to each other in real life? Why do you have to only talk in dreams? Like I don't I don't get why this is so special but okay. All right after that we have Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. This is another HarperCollins imprint title so I'm just adding this reminder here to please check out the links in the description for ways to support the union strike that is still ongoing. This is about uh, two sisters who live on an island. They've never left this island. Uh, every summer this special bird that only exists on their island shows up and so people come, tourists come to like see this bird. But this year the bird is late and they are worried about it. Uh, and also there are some new bird watchers who may be romantic interests for each of the sisters. Um, also everyone in their family has some kind of magical power and one of, and they always get their magical power before they turn 18. They're about to turn 18. One of the sisters has a power, one of the sisters doesn't. Uh, and so it's also her kind of questioning am I ever going to get my magical powers? Uh, so it's about the summer before they turn 18 and go off to college and all of this stuff with like the bird and the tourists and the magic. Um, and like again this is one that was fine. I read this one for a vlog as well. So this was for my summer vlog where I read a bunch of books that had the word summer in the title. Um, and yeah, this one was this one was okay. I didn't have really strong feelings about it so I'm not going to be hanging on to it. Uh, another one is actually from the same vlog, so maybe you can kind of imagine how that vlog went, <laughs> uh, is This One Summer by Jillian and Mariko Tamaki. Uh, so this is a graphic novel that is about a girl who's maybe like 12 or so, uh, who is on vacation at the beach with her family. They go to the beach every year and like stay in this beach house. She has a friend that she sees every year. Uh, but this year is different because her parents are fighting and she doesn't really know why. And it's really about her 
trying to figure it like kind of not knowing how to deal with the emotions and pressures she is feeling from the fact that from growing up and because her parents are fighting this is one i guess i had more conflicting feelings i kind of was like i don't know how to feel about this it, i guess it in some ways is very slice of life in that there isn't a clear story arc to it it just is so this is some stuff that happened this summer um the main character is not particularly likable but i think that it does capture something about the being the age at which she is in this kind of awkward transition period where still very much a child but also trying to be more of an adult um and that transition of like trying to figure out how to deal with and process all of this new stuff about the world and emotions and relationships and people and existing so you know this is one that i had very uh conflicting feelings about because i didn't love it but i also think uh you know it, it did what i think it was trying to do so i guess there's that all right and then the last book that i have i'm dropping stuff uh but the last book that i have is one that i I think I'm unhauling. This one I might keep. I'm not 100% sure at this point, but it is Crossings by Alex Landrigan. This is sort of literary historical fiction kind of genre, I guess. Uh, in it, we are we start out by following a bookbinder who has been given a special manuscript by his, uh, by like a patron who and she's asked him to bind this book in a very special way but has told him to never read the book um and he agrees to that but then his patron dies and he's like well all bets are off so he reads the book and the rest of this book is the manuscript that he is reading and it is three short stories um, that are all connected to varying degrees and there are two the thing that's interesting about this book is that there are two ways to read the book one way is the conventional way you just read each individual short story start to finish and then there is what's called the baroness sequence in which you they have a they it tells you how to jump between the different stories uh which shows a way of weaving these three stories together so it really becomes one full story. I read it as the Baroness sequence to read it as one complete story that is all woven together, which personally I feel like is probably the best way to read it uh, because I don't know if the individual stories would be particularly compelling uh, as individual stories. Even so, even though I liked the Baroness sequence, this is another one that I didn't have very strong feelings about. There are definitely things about it that I didn't like or didn't work for me. Um, but when I read it, it was kind of exactly what I was in the mood for at the time. So I am glad that I read it when I did because it was really like the vibe that I wanted, but I didn't think it was that great. I wouldn't reread it. The only reason I would keep it is because I love this cover so much. It's just so beautiful. I don't know. I love this cover. So this one I might keep. I'm not really sure, um, but it might be an unhaul. I, I don't know. Okay, so those are the books that I am unhauling from my... 2022 reading uh i would love to know what was your worst book of the year since i'm not doing an actual worst book of the year video this is my only opportunity to ask you so either what was your worst book of the year or just what is a book that you are going to be unhauling from uh your reading from the previous year love to know talk to me in the comments um but thank you all for watching and until next time bye